I had I had come so close to giving up on my business, giving up on others, but I had so many people that believed in me that it only made sense to keep going. And my desire, my burning desire to make sure that I have enough money to provide for my family allowed me to pour so much money into an opportunity like Tesla stock and into real estate because all I thought about was I'm going to thank myself in years to come. Yeah, it sucks now. Yeah, I might look like an idiot now, but I be truly believe that in five, 10 years, I would thank myself and I, I surprisingly did. So I'm so glad and I hope you can really take away the lessons that I learned. Hey guys, Anthony Pietrimona here. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about how you can become a millionaire on an average income of $50,000 or less. If you're looking to build your wealth in the stock market with options trading, day trading, swing trading, you're going to want to subscribe. If you appreciate the video, please give it a thumbs up at the end and let's dive into it. When I was 20 and I just finished school and I decided I wasn't going back to school, I had $3,600 to my name. And I was running my online fitness coaching business because I wanted to help people improve their body and that was what I was passionate about. So I decided to charge people a monthly fee to create custom nutrition and custom training programs for them. Combining that income with training at Orange Theory Fitness where I taught fitness classes, those two combined allowed me to increase my income to get to about 4,000 a month. And then I decided to hire a business coach and work on my sales skills by buying courses through Grant Cardone and going through the mentorship program to increase my value so that way I can offer more value to other people and in return, earn more money. I was living at home and that was the biggest key in the beginning. So the biggest key in the beginning was to live at home so I had a lot more money to save it's because my expenses were non-existent. I was spending 1,000, maximum $2,000 a month for everything and I was saving all that money. I did that from, from 20 to about 23 and then I moved out at 23. So my focus from 20 to 23 was increase my income as much as I can and then keep my expenses as low as I can. So for those of you who need to just start off, I really power saved my way to get to $100,000 and then began investing once I got to $100,000. I didn't actually begin investing until I had that 100,000. And I don't recommend that. I actually recommend we learn to how to invest as early as possible and get that started. Whether you have 10,000 or 20,000, you know, maybe get up to 10,000 and start investing. But the sole focus early on is to increase income as much as you can keep expenses as low as you can and then invest as much as you can and focus on learning about how to get as high as returns as you can. So if you're in your 20s, those are the priorities. If you're earning $50,000 or less, your biggest priority is to increase income because you can only save so much when your income is that low because if you're moved out on your own and you're paying for your expenses, yeah, it's gonna cost at least $40,000 a year to actually live a normal life. So. We're gonna need to build that cushion to earn more to get upwards of eighty thousand dollars a year or hundred thousand dollars a year. And if you don't know how to get your income up, then you're gonna to want to look at side hustles, possible side hustles to, to build up that income. And it was really it was obviously really scary for me at that point when I'm trying to build confidence in myself to believe my worth and charge my worth. But it's something that if you care about your success long term, you're gonna make the sacrifices necessary. I didn't go out on weekends whatsoever. I worked every weekend. There was maybe one one Saturday a month where I would go out and see my friends. My friends would always ask me to hang out. I would say no, and they knew why. And they eventually stopped asking me to hang out because I was focused on earning as much as I could. I burnt out a few times over those years, and that's just what it took. So you gotta ask yourself, are you willing to make sacrifices now for a few years to live decades of freedom? Are you, if, are you willing to do that? If you're not, then you're gonna be stuck in you know, spending all the money you make, not having enough left over to invest, and then running, you know, a rat's race and chasing your tail all the way up until your 40s and 50s. If that's not something you want to do, then you want to make huge sacrifices as early as on as possible. And you're going to see also why that's so important if you watch my video on the power of the dollar by age. Because in that video, I talk about how if you're in your 20s and 30s, it's so necessary to save as much money as possible and invest that as much as you can because the dollar multiplier is so extreme. Every dollar saved when you're 20 is worth 10 times more when you compare that to when you're 50. So the key is to sacrifice as early on as possible. Don't listen to what people say where they say, oh, you know, you gotta enjoy your 20s while you can. No, 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 the 20s are for sacrificing, in my opinion, because if you can sacrifice in your 20s, you can live your 30s, 40s, and 50s 
like a king for the rest of your life and provide for your family like no one else could. If you really want to achieve financial freedom, it starts in your 20s. You want to set up that decade properly from 20 to 30. Increase income, keep expenses low, invest the difference and research opportunities to invest into high growth stocks or high growth real estate or high growth crypto, whatever it is for you. Choose a, a certain market and specialize in that market. When I was 21 and 22, I was reading all the books I could on real estate investing, on stock market investing, and I had read over 20 books for real estate investing and over 20 books for stock market investing. I was watching all YouTube videos like Graham Stephan and me, Kevin, everyone to do with real estate, everyone to do with stocks. I was watching these videos every single day, looking for opportunities, and I made my first investment in Apple stock when I was 23, and I put just like $1,000 in there, and I kept the rest of my money in cash, and I was watching it. And then I do, did more research on, on other stocks and I was just watching the stocks move for a few months. And then I put a big chunk of my money into Tesla stock. And as Tesla stock was going down, I actually added to my position. I started buying Tesla when it was about 280 and I watched it go all the way down to 180. And I even bought 50 shares at 180, which is actually 250 shares now split adjusted. And the 180 price split adjusted now, you divide that by five. So that's $40 per share that I bought 50 shares of Tesla stock back then. And I held and I kept adding to my position because the more I researched Tesla, the company, the more I grew conviction. And this was in 2019. So I was adding to my position all throughout 2019 because I had all that cash on the sidelines, the 100,000 I had saved up. So as my conviction grew, I added more and more and I continued to increase my income. And at this point, when I was 23, I moved out and I immediately noticed it was so much harder to save money. While I was at home, I was saving $1,000 per week because I got my income up to $8,000 to $10,000 a month while living at home. And I automated $1,000 a week going from my checking account to this online brokerage where I kept adding to my positions in Tesla. This is all throughout 2019. And there was peak FUD at this point too, where Tesla's, Tesla's going to go bankrupt. And I had to blank out all this noise. And my, my parents, everyone was telling me that this is a horrible investment. How, why are you wasting your money and putting your money in this? You should put money in real estate. Anyone I talked to was actually telling me I was an idiot for wasting my money and just flushing it down the toilet by putting it into Tesla stock. And I had to completely just blank out all this noise and follow my conviction. And this is one of the hardest things. You know, you're watching a stock go down and down and down. I'm down 30% of my money. I'm down tens of thousands of dollars at this point and I continue to hold. And it wasn't until about three or four months later that I broke even on the trade. You know, most people would actually just cash out and say, oh, I finally broke even. And I held, and because I knew like, this is the company of the future. That's what I felt. And I, I knew, you know, I'm looking to invest in this company. I'm not looking to just be in and out of this company for a few months. So I focused on my business, increasing my income and, and adding more value, scaling my business, working with my business coach to do that. He helped me scale that, automate a lot of things so I could increase my income. I kept my expenses low. But then when I moved out at 23, I really, I really noticed because number one, I inflated my expenses a bit. And this was something that made it a lot tougher to, to save money on. I bought my Mercedes. So I was making payments on the Mercedes. The gas was expensive. The insurance was expensive. I am now renting this place out for 1500 a month plus utilities about 1600. So I basically added about 2,500 to $3,000 a month in expenses from being at home to moving out on top of buying my own groceries. So well over $3,000 a month on top of what I was spending previously. So I was spending about 1500 a month at home and then I'm adding an extra 3000 a month or more by moving out. So now my baseline expenses for living became 4,500 a month. And that was about 23 years old. I'm now 25 years old. So I've been moved out for two years and I noticed I was only saving about one to $2,000 a month where I was saving 4,000 a month or more living at home. Luckily at this point, I had about over $130,000 and um, my investment started to grow, but I was only contributing at this time an average of 1,000 a month. And I was okay with this, but I shouldn't have been okay with this because you know, if I kept up that 1,000 a week you know, over the next two years, I would be so much more ahead. Thankfully, the investment over 10X, now at this point, 20X in Tesla stock. So, you know, I'm very grateful for that where my investment blew up to over 2 million in Tesla stock over this time. But this just shows the power of building conviction in an investment that you know that seems high risk 
and continuing to deploy money into it as it goes down. You know, it would have been so easy for me to just sell out because I lost money. And it was, I had to convince myself every day. I had to research the company every single day for hours. And I loved it though. That's the thing. I actually really enjoyed doing that. So every single day I would research the company for one or two hours a day while spending most of my time on my business and still working at Orange Theory Fitness teaching classes. You know, my brain wasn't off ever. It, I was working nonstop and that's why I burnt out multiple times and I, I went through multiple periods of depression. I had to go away to a cabin and isolate myself from everyone because I was so just overworked and I there were so many times where I wanted to quit everything. I can't tell you how, how dark those times were and it was part of the process. Looking back in hindsight, I'm glad I pushed it that hard. I really am glad I pushed it that hard. And when I was in those moments, I, there were so many times I wanted to give up and I would just create space and I would talk to my business coach and he would help me to say, you know what, create space for a bit. You're gonna come back and you're gonna say, you know what, this is okay, I'm good to keep pushing. And I did that and I, I, I'm so glad I made the sacrifices to not go out with my friends. I'm so glad I didn't listen to the naysayers. I'm so glad I didn't listen to the, to the opinions of everyone around me who were telling me what I was doing was stupid. I'm so glad I stuck to my conviction. I'm so glad I continued to pour money into my investments as they were going down. There are so many decisions that looking back now, I remember in the moment, all those decisions like nonstop in my brain, I'm like, am I making the right decision? But I did it anyways. And then I look back now and I made such good decisions and I, I cannot thank myself enough because all I kept thinking about was my future and my family's future. And I'm like, no, this, this is the right decision. And I kept pushing the envelope. And now I'm, I'm so thankful because th this, this nest egg I have now is enough to provide income for myself and my family for the rest of my life. I, I hope you can take away lessons from my story where I'm only 25 years old now. From 20 to 25, I went from zero dollars to a multi-millionaire. And I, I cannot, I, I, I should be proud of myself, but all I'm focused on is what's next. So yes, I'm proud of myself, but all I see is what's next for myself. And the reason why I'm sharing the story is because I want to show you the lessons that I took from doing that. All the stressful experiences I had over those years. And what I learned was you have to push through all those times of discomfort, all those times you doubt yourself, and you have to have the right support system around you to keep going. If I didn't have the right support system around me to keep going, I would have given up. I had come so close to giving up on my business, giving up on others, but I had so many people that believed in me that it only made sense to keep going. And my desire, my burning desire to make sure that I have enough money to provide for my family allowed me to pour so much money into an opportunity like Tesla stock and into real estate because all I thought about was I'm going to thank myself in years to come. Yeah, it sucks now. Yeah, I might look like an idiot now, but I be truly believe that in five, 10 years, I would thank myself and I, I surprisingly did. So I'm so glad and I hope you can really take away the lessons that I learned. To summarize, if we want to go from zero to millionaire in the shortest time frame possible, we want to keep our expenses as low as possible while increasing our income as high as possible while looking for investments that provide the greatest returns. And those ones are very volatile, so you have to be able to stomach the volatility have the right support system and follow people that have done what you are trying to do so they can keep you on the right path and stay focused. When you doubt yourself, you have to convince yourself to keep pushing. Always, always keep pushing. You're going to be uncomfortable all the time. You're going to want to give up all the time, but it's in those moments that if you can keep going, you're going to, you're going to prevail and you're going to thank yourself in the future. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe for more videos just like this. I want to help you achieve financial freedom in the stock market. And I'll see you in the next video.